Okay, last time we introduced pseudo first order conditions for deriving the rate law for a more complicated reaction with more than one uh, reagent. And so for step one, what we did was for a reaction, again, A plus B going to C plus D, and we have a rate, uh, let, me change, let me change markers. Um, if our rate was equals K, some K, and then I'm going to switch up the order, some B to the Y, A to the X. For step one, under pseudo first order conditions, what we did was we picked that B would be greater than A. And then typically under pseudo first order conditions, we were saying that B is greater than 10 A. So this is our pseudo first order condition. So again, this was the key part. And by doing this, um, because B is so high in concentration throughout the reaction, B will be, the concentration of B will be approximately constant, which means that we can then turn this expression, K times B to the Y, into K obs. So by doing that, we then were able to fit A T versus T, and then this gives us the exponent in a, uh, of A, so the, the order of A, and we also got K obs. So for the second step, now we need to find now we need to find y as well as the actual k. So for second step, step two. You have two possibilities now. You could, again, run it under pseudo first conditions, but this time reverse it. So possibility one, or possibility a, do run the reaction with a greater than b. Possibility two, if this uh, is not convenient for ex your experiment, you could instead vary uh, your initial concentration of B, but this B is still a lot greater than A, and measure, or calculate, sorry, rather, calculate K obs. So what this will do is this will give us what we want, which is we'll, we'll get K and we'll get Y. Step two is to get this. Step one gave us x and k obs. OK. So what does this look like in actual, in a typical experiment? So let's suppose that, let's suppose that, so here we're looking at, again, k, k obs equals k times b y. So suppose y equals 0. So again, k obs will then equal k, b to the 0, what we will expect to see in scenario 1 is if we plot our initial concentration of b, so we're varying this, versus k obs, this expression will mean that this should be constant. So again, y equals 0, k obs equals k, so this value is k. Okay, so that's the easiest. So then, then our final rate expression would then be rate equals k a to the x. Okay, scenario one. Scenario two, let's suppose y equals one, so first order in reactant b, so then k obs equals k times the concentration of b to the 1. So what this means is that if we again try to plot k obs versus b, we should get a line. We should get some sort of line, and then this slope equals k. Okay, And then our last scenario, which will govern all other scenarios, suppose y equals some value n, so it could be second order in b, so n equals 2, third order, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what this means is that k obs equals k times b to the n. 
So then if we actually plot the log of this, so then log of k obs equals n log of b plus of, yes, log of k. So then if we were to um, plot this out, this should give us what we want to do actually in this case, rather than plotting k obs versus b, we want to plot log of b versus log of k obs. And then this should give us uh, some, sort of, some sort of line, right, where then our slope, so the slope will equal n. So this will be our power of b. And then the, the intercept here should then give us k. So that is how you would solve for the second step. And then with these values, now that we have both y and k, we can have the final differential rate equation uh, from this method. So we'll do actually some examples of data processing, either on your problem set or in class, or maybe both. <laughs>